Are you amazed by the grace of God? Yes. Oh, come on. Amen. Do you stand redeemed? Amen. Let the redeemed say so. Amen. Do you stand redeemed? Yes. Amen. Whew. You guys need to stop that. <laughs> Take your Bibles, please. First Thessalonians. 1 Thessalonians chapter 1, we just started last week uh, really in a series. We're going to be in this book for a while, uh, so settle in. Really, we uh, titled this message a church checkup. We're going to finish the second part of this this morning. I uh, gave you some review last week. Remember, uh, Paul was writing to the church of Thessalonica, uh, and what had happened was is on his missionary journey there, uh, he was able to spend some time, and while he was there, uh, many Jews received Christ as their Savior, as well as many Greeks. Well, in that in that happening, in those receiving Christ as their Savior, there was quite a turmoil within the city, to the point where they had to leave, and Paul, being concerned about the church, ended up sending Timothy back, uh, really, as we said, just to do a checkup on them. Say, hey, how is this new church doing? How is this church growing? And, and you know, are they holding to the faith? Are they holding to what we taught them? Are they holding to the scriptures? And and then are they, are they, how are they enduring that turmoil or, or all of that was swirling uh, in that town? And that really is the context here of what we discussed last week. And we said our, our focus as we look at this book is to grow as a church. Ultimately, that's how I want to us to look at these scriptures is how can we as Community Baptist Church continue to grow more for Christ every day or more in Christ every day? And also then with that is a personal responsibility. Is a personal responsibility for myself and for you to then be doing your part in the work of Christ. So that, in essence, is that church checkup we talked about. We said briefly, I'll just mention this briefly this morning, that Paul, and we'll read these verses in a moment, that Paul was addressing a people, not a building. Remember, this building that we have, as beautiful as it is and how blessed we are to have it, uh, this building does not make up Community Baptist Church. You folks make up Community Baptist Church. This is a, a organized group of saved, baptized believers who have so through God's grace and will desired to join in fellowship here at Community Baptist Church. And I entreated you last week, if you haven't done that and you'd like to be part, we would love to have you part here at Community Baptist Church. Maybe it's something you've been praying about. Maybe the Lord has uh, been speaking to your heart about. We would uh, just uh, find it a great joy to come alongside you and serve with you and, and you to serve with us. Uh, and we even challenged, maybe you've been seeking the Lord about baptism. Maybe you've been saved, but there's never been a time in your life where you followed the Lord in scriptural baptism. Uh, we want you to take care of that as well. Next week, we'll have a baptism uh, for Trinity Ricks. We are excited about that. We are praying for her, and I'd ask you to even pray for her this week as well. But folks, God is doing uh, some great things in this church. And in those great things, it's only through Jesus Christ. You heard that this morning. That was the theme of many of these songs that were sung. All that we're able to do here as a body of believers, all that we're able to do as Community Baptist Church is because of what God and his son Jesus Christ has done for us. We stand redeemed because of his son. You are able to be here today and sit under the preaching of God's word simply by the graces of God. He's given you another day to do that. I want to move on now this morning. Look with me at verse 1. We'll read just a few verses down this morning for context. 1 Thessalonians chapter 1, verse 1. Paul and Silvanus and Timotheus unto the church of the Thessalonians, which is in God the Father and in the Lord Jesus Christ, grace be unto you and peace from God our Father. 
and the Lord Jesus Christ. We give thanks to God always for you all, making mention of you in our prayers, remembering without ceasing, we're going to look at these three things this morning, your work of faith and labor of love and patience of hope in our Lord Jesus Christ in the sight of God and our Father. Remembering, one more time, verse 3, without ceasing your work of faith and labor of love and patience of hope in our Lord Jesus Christ in the sight of God and our Father. Paul, as I said, was addressing that congregation. He was addressing those local believers here at Thessalonica. He was addressing that church. And then also as he addresses that church, which I believe is applicable for you and I today, Paul is also addressing indicators of a healthy church and spiritual life. So if you're one to take notes, I jot that down because that's what we're going to talk about today. We're talking about some indicators of a healthy church and spiritual life. And we see those three things in verse 3. We're going to start with where he says, remembering without ceasing your work in faith or your work of faith. Paul uses these three phases, the first being your work of faith. Paul talks about the work produced by faith. Remember, Paul has taught us through many scriptures, and I think we heard it this morning with Brother Dora there in Ephesians, where Paul has clearly taught that salvation is only through Christ and not of works. Right? For by grace are you saved through faith, not as yourselves, it is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast, right? So when we see Paul then using this phrase, remembering without ceasing your work of faith, Paul is not addressing that works save you. Paul is not addressing that you and I can do anything outside of putting our faith and trust in Jesus Christ to be saved. Paul is, however, teaching a principle through this scripture. He's talking about a change that occurs into the life of every true believer. And that change is a byproduct of faith. In other words, if you put your faith and trust in Jesus Christ, a change takes place. There will be an evident change in your life. Remember, we spent time on this in James, and I will have you turn there. Hold your uh, finger there in, in Thessalonians. But turn over to James chapter 2. And I will read just a couple of verses here. Here we're in James for our Sunday night services. We're working through this book. And James paints this picture as well and really teaches this principle where uh, once we receive Christ as our Savior, once we become a child of God, then we should be living differently. And he really keys in here on James chapter 2. Look at verse, uh, we'll say verse 14. We'll go there. James says, What doth it profit a man, my brethren, though a man say he hath faith and not works, can, say, can faith save him? If your brother or sister is naked and destitute of daily good, daily food, and one of you say to them, Depart in peace, be ye warmed and filled, notwithstanding ye give them not those things which are needful to the body, what doth it profit? Even so faith that it hath not works is dead, being alone. He goes on, two more verses. Verse 18, yea, a man may say, Thou hast faith, and I have works. Show me thy faith without thy works, and I will show thee my faith by my works. Thou believest that there is one God, thou doest well. The devils also believe and tremble. Listen, James is teaching the same principle that Paul is. That when you put your faith and trust in Jesus Christ, that relationship with him alone should produce a life of good works, if you will, of spiritual works, of spiritual growth. Again, James is not saying that you have to do good or you must do certain things before you can be forgiven. 
The principle is, the biblical application is, he is saying, he is in agreement with Paul, that if you have really received Christ as your Savior and Lord, it will change the way I live. It will be evident in your life. A healthy church, a healthy Christian is engaged in reaching out to a lost world. It is a not content uh, to only, or not, it's, it is not uh, only for us to meet here for service, although I am glad you're here today. I'm glad you're amongst God's people. I'm glad you're being fed by God's word, but that's not just what church is for. Church isn't just to come on Sunday morning and hear a message. Church isn't just to come on Sunday night and hear a message. Church isn't just to come on Wednesday night and hear a Bible study. Listen, we ought to be living our faith because of what Christ has done for me on the cross should, should compel me to go out and spread his word to a lost and dying world. And folks, as much as I should desire to do that, so should everyone in this room, if you're a child of God. We're not, no one's exempt this morning. No one's exempt from the preaching and teaching of the scriptures. We all have a responsibility. And if you're part here at Community Baptist Church, then we invite you to be doing this very thing. Live your faith. We want to see Christ in us. The world needs to see Christ in you. That's what's made evident through your salvation. That's what you should be striving for every day. You should be so thankful of the grace of God in your life, of how God gave his son for you, how Jesus Christ then shed his blood and died for you, how we have a risen Savior. We should be so just in all of that that we should live our faith. And that we should take this admonition from Paul and James and that we should do this work of faith. In other words, we should every day desire to be more like Jesus Christ. Well, that's a great goal to have, isn't it? You can't even really have pride in a goal like that, can you? When you think about it, it's a humbling goal just on its surface. I want to be more like Christ. I want you to be more like Christ. I want you to be mindful that you're going to work out your faith. The people of a healthy church are working to bring the message of Jesus Christ and infuse it into every facet of their life. That's working out your faith. That's spending time in this book every day and allowing the word of God through the teaching of the Holy Spirit to empower us, to strengthen us in our faith. So then we go out and the world can see Christ in us. Not for pride's sake, not so we can say, oh, look, look how, look how much I bear the likeness of Jesus. It's not about that. It's how they will see Christ in you and they will say, I would love that in my life. 
I would love that in my life. I would love those characteristics. I would love those attributes that person has, that man has, that woman has, that young lady, that man has. I would love to have that kind of peace. I would love to have that kind of contentment. I would love to have that kind of joy. I would love to have that that kind of uh, just just a, a spirit of, of, of gratitude and service to the Lord. And in seeing that in you, then gives you an opportunity to tell them it's not of you, but it's of Christ. It's of what he has done. There is an evidence of the work of faith. That's what Paul is teaching here. Again, remembering without ceasing your work of faith. This church in Thessalonica was doing this. Timothy reported, Paul then saw it. Paul is entreating them. He's saying, you guys are doing great. You guys are working out your faith. You guys were changed that moment you received Christ as your Savior. Those Jews that rejected Christ, rejected that he was the Son of God, and then believed that he was their Savior, their lives were changed. He said those Greeks that had all kinds of gods, had all kinds of idols, and set them all aside for the one true God, he says their lives were changed, and they worked their faith. So much to the point where those around saw it. We'll see later, we'll see as we move through this chapter next week, how this spread. This spread throughout the town. Everyone saw something different in this church. And Paul says one of those indicators was your work of faith. He then switches gears and gives us our second phrase where he says, remembering without ceasing your work in faith and labor in love. Look at that phrase for a minute. Love is not just emotional. Paul uses the word labor to infer hard work. This is sacrificial and intentional love. Love takes work sometimes. Some of you are hard to love. I'm teasing. <laughs> sort of. <laughs> but love does. It takes work. There's effort. I have to work at it. And if I don't work at it, then I don't deepen my relationship with whoever I am desiring to love, right? I could say, man, you know, I love Pastor Jeremy. And I really like, where is he at? There he is. And I'd really like to deepen that relationship, but I'm never going to speak to him again. <laughs> Which might happen after this morning anyway. <laughs> that doesn't build that relationship, does it? No, I have to say, man, as is, is, is grumpy as that guy can be, I'm still going to love him. I got to work at it. There's intentional love. There's a labor involved. Paul speaks to two avenues here of love. The first is our love for God. And I will ask you this question. This was convicting to my heart as well. Are you in love with God? Are you in love with God? Say, well, I love him. Say, I try to have a good relationship, you know, I spend time in the word when I can, I, I pray, you know, when I have time, I, I think I love him, that's great. Are you in love with him? Are you developing that relationship with the one, get this, who loved you first? Isn't that something? Even my love back to him is because he loved me. That's love. And you want to talk about a labor of love that we're supposed to demonstrate? You don't think God labored when he sent his son for our sin? 
You don't think Christ labored in love when he willingly endured the cross for you and I. That's labor. Boy, that's sacrificial love, isn't it? We ought to be aspiring and growing to have that love in our lives. But our first response or our first uh, uh, thought here is to love God. What are you doing then to deepen your relationship with him? You say, you know, Pastor Fisher, I love God, but I know I should love him more. Then put some things in your life to spend time with him. Because that's what it's about. You see, we schedule our day and then we plug God in. Instead of spending time with God and scheduling our day. You want to love God more than you did yesterday? Spend time with him today. Be in this book. Spend time in prayer Go to him as your heavenly father. Go to him as your comforter. Go to him as your friend. Go to him as your teacher and deepen your relationship with him every day. Paul's second avenue here of love is not just that we love God, but secondly, that we love others. And listen, this love, as I jested to a moment ago, is not easy. God has called us to love our enemies. And bless those that persecute us. Is that not a labor in love? Say, why is that in the Bible? Because our instinct is to wash our hands and say, I will never speak to that person again. And God says, no, 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 no. He says, no, no. If you love me, if you love me, you'll labor in love, and you'll love even your enemies. You'll love even those that are out to get you. You'll love even those that maybe you don't get along with. But you, if you are desiring to be a healthy church and have a healthy spiritual life, Paul says, you will labor in love. If we are in love... If we are to love those who try to take advantage of us, we will truly love someone we never give up on them. A healthy church is active in reaching out to the hurting. They are willing to be inconvenienced. They understand that love takes time and sometimes sacrifice. So not only do we see an evidence of a work of faith in a healthy church and a healthy spiritual life, but we see that there is an evidence of a labor of love in a healthy church and a spiritual life. And I will commend this church. Folks, as your pastor, you do this well. You love well collectively. You love this community around you. you. You love to spread the gospel of Christ. You love to work together. But I want to entreat all of us, don't ever take it for granted. Keep laboring. Keep laboring. Because the minute we let our guard down and we settle back, where the devil's going to be right there. Right there. And so often, then if we're not walking in the spirit, we see our, we allow our flesh rather to do some things that we ought not do. So let's, as we look at this checkup, as we address our spiritual state of the church and even our spiritual state of ourselves are we working in love or i'm sorry are we working of faith are we laboring in love and lastly this morning the end of verse three says remember without a ceasing your work in faith and labor in love and patience of hope in our lord jesus christ he says he commends this church you're working your faith you're laboring in love and you have such patience and hope. Remember when Paul wrote this letter, things were not easy to be a believer at this time. 
Maybe they had been called godless, deserters of the faith. Uh, maybe they had been called all kinds of names and, and ridiculed. They may have faced economic pressures, social pressures, maybe legal pressures. And in spite of all that was swirling around this town, in spite of the pressure, they endured. In spite of the pressure, they endured. In spite of the pressure, they were patient in hope. The word patience here means to bear up under. Isn't that great? They endured because of hope. Hear me now. Biblical hope is not a wish. It is a strong confidence. Amen. That's right. I like this next part, and if you take notes, write this down. Biblical hope is a certainty that is anchored to truth. Amen. That's right. Isn't that great? You see, so I can end this life hope that my great uncle leaves me a million dollar inheritance. <laughs> it's a hope. It's not anchored in truth. Not sure I have very many great uncles left, to be honest with you. Now listen to this. But I do have a hope that my inheritance is in heaven. Amen. And I can stand solid in that. Why? Because this word says so. Amen. This book says Jesus Christ is coming back. This book says eternity is just down the road for every one of us. And eternity may start today. Eternal life may start today. Can you imagine that trumpet sounds? If you're here, you could have all the fried chicken you like. <laughs> My inheritance is coming. As we heard those songs, as Mr. Brown even said in uh, the words he spoke a moment ago before the choir and the song, there's going to be day, there's going to be a day we're going to be before our savior kneel before him fall on our faces dead men rejoice but that day is coming I don't have to wonder, I don't have to contemplate, I don't have to wish, I don't have to think maybe, I know. And that's what these folks in Thessalonica, that's what this church was relying on. They had a hope, and that hope is even stated in verse 3, the patience of hope in our Lord Jesus Christ. Their hope is because of Christ. They knew he was coming back. They knew what their eternity is, just as you and I do today. They understood that there is more to life than just the present. That's how you and I as a church can be patient in hope. That's how you and I as a Christian can endure with hope because this life will one day be gone, but we have all of eternity to spend with our Savior. I'm looking forward to that day. This life is never out of control, although there might be times it feels that way. God is never out of control. These folks, I don't know. They had feelings, they had emotions, just as you and I do, this church of Thessalonica. And I'm sure there were days where their faith didn't waver, where their faith stood strong. But I'm sure there were days 
where all of that turmoil and, and all of that ridicule and, and, and all of that just swirling in where they lived and the, 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 with their neighbors and, and, and how others thought of them and treated them, I'm sure it may even at times have wore on them, just as it does you and I. But they were able to endure. They were able to work their faith. They were able to labor in love. And they were able to be patient because of the hope they had in Jesus Christ and in their eternity. And when you can get a glimpse of that in your life, I know times may be tough. I know trials may be tough. But when we put eternity into a perspective of this daily life, listen, God will give you the strength to endure anything. He won't put anything in your way too hard for you to bear. He wants them to bear it with you. We endure because we know that someday Jesus Christ is going to return. A healthy church is patient in hope. Do you have that hope today? But it's a sobering question, isn't it? Maybe you're here today and there's never been a time in your life where you put your faith and trust in Jesus Christ. Maybe you're here today and you heard the preaching of God's word and even now you're thinking, I don't have a hope of eternity. I don't know if Christ were to come back or if I were to die today where, where I would spend. Maybe you're thinking that today. Listen, we want you to take care of that today. I want to tell you, this book shows, teaches us how we can all be saved. This book teaches that you repent of your sin. You put your faith and trust in Christ. You believe how Christ came and lived a sinless, perfect life so he could be that perfect sacrifice for you. You see, we were no longer acceptable in God's eyes. We were separated from him. Something had to take place. There had to have been a payment in order for us to then be able to stand before a holy God again. And that wasn't just something. That was someone. And that someone was Jesus Christ. He shed his blood on that cross willingly for me, for my sin, willingly for you, for your sin. Gave his life. But let me tell you something. Our Savior is different from all the other so-called gods of this world. Our Savior is alive. He rose again. He came forth from that grave to have victory over death and hell and the grave so that if you and I then put our faith and trust in him, we can know for certain that we're a child of God. And then you can have this hope you can have this assurance. As you heard, some of you maybe heard in Sunday school, and I'll close with this. This week has been a great week. God's doing some great things in this church by his grace. Listen now. We had a young man saved at release time. The gospel was given just as it was a moment ago. And a little boy saw his need of a savior. Received Christ as his savior. A new name was written in glory. He's going to stand before God someday and he's going to say I stand 
redeemed. Amen. Isn't that something? Amen. I'm not done yet. <laughs> Talked with Pastor here in the last week. Pastor Taylor and said, you know, Pastor Taylor, I think it's good if you go pay a visit to Brent Renshaw. He's doing well, but it's been a while. And we were in the office and I had many calls that day. So I got a call to say, you need to call Pastor when you get a chance. I called him back. He says, Pastor Fisher, Brent just got saved. Amen. Folks, this man was dead. Literally. They were ready to remove him from life support several times. And then just the day would come and they'd say, no, let's just wait a little bit longer. Here a couple of weeks ago, a month ago now, he woke up. Started to get some facilities about him. Could say a couple of words. Eating a couple of things. Pastor said it was one of the longest prayers he's ever prayed with someone. Because Brent is just so thorough when his speech is slow. She said we worked him through the plan of salvation. I said, Brent... You know, you weren't too good here a few weeks ago. If you were to have died at that time, do you know where you'd spend eternity? He said he just started to weep. I said, no, I don't know. Pastor Taylor said, can I show you today? He said, I want to know today led him through a prayer of salvation. Pastor said, Brent, I'd like you to do something if you're ever able and willing. He said, if you're able to come out of this place, he said, we'd love to have you in church. He said, I'd love to have you walk down this aisle and tell the church that you got saved. Brent said, Pastor, I would love to do that. I want to be in church every service I can be. I don't know what his body will allow, but let me tell you something. Brent Renshaw will stand before God redeemed someday. Amen. And folks, all in part, listen to me. Because we are doing our best to model what you heard preached today. You are working your faith. You are laboring in love. You are patient in hope. You see, these things work. There's a model in Scripture for a reason. God says, do as I tell you, and I will rain blessings down. And now we see these individuals come to know Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. And listen, if you're here today or you're listening online this morning, you can settle that today. Don't go another day. Don't go another day wondering when you stand before God, if you can look to him and say, no, I'm redeemed by your son in what he has done. Settle it today. We're going to have a time of invitation in a moment where you can come forward. You can settle it in your pew, but we encourage you. You have any questions, you have any doubts, you want some things answered through the scriptures, we will take this word of God today and show you how you can leave this place being born again. And then Christian, these last questions are for you. Is your faith active or passive? Are you living your faith? Am I living my faith? Are we laboring to love? Is there someone that you should love more? 
Is there someone you're having a hard time loving? Then labor to love. Are you in love with God today? And then lastly, are we enduring in faith? Are we enduring in faith? Do you have that hope? Does that hope sustain you? Does that hope drive you? That someday you'll be in eternity with your Savior. Folks, God's doing some great things. But as I said last week, we get checkups on purpose. We don't go to the doctor and hear the doctor's advice and then just walk out. Well, some of you may. You shouldn't, nor should I. And today's no different. When we look at our life and we reflect upon our spiritual condition and our spiritual life and we look at our church and we desire to grow and we do that all through this book, we do it all through his word, God reveals something in my heart that I need to change. I should determine to change it, not live in it. If God has shown you something through his spirit today, if God has convicted your heart today about a matter, maybe he wants you to live your faith more. Maybe he wants you to love more. Maybe your hope is just wavering a little bit. You need to settle that today. Then settle these things today. Don't just get the checkup and walk out. Get the checkup. Take the medicine. Let God work in your life. And then as we work together as a child of God, boy, what great things we can accomplish as Community Baptist Church, all because of God's amazing grace. Let's pray. Lord, we love you. God, as I said a moment ago, because you first loved us, you are so good. Your grace is truly amazing. God, we've covered several things this morning through your word. Us as a church, us as a believer, desiring to just do a checkup in our life. Just desiring to make sure we are more like Christ every day. Whether it be by working our faith or living a life of faith. Whether it be by laboring in love. Whether it be by being patient in hope. God, I pray you'd be with each one that's heard this word today that... Your word would not return void, but you would do a work in our hearts and lives that we'd live more like Christ. And then, God, if there's one today that's never received Christ, that they would settle that today. What a day it would be that we could rejoice with them, stand with them as they then could say, they've been redeemed. With head bowed and eyes closed this morning, no one looking around, please, just for a moment. Piano begins to play. I just want to ask a couple questions. Maybe you're here and maybe you don't have that hope. Maybe you don't know what eternity is going to be. Maybe you wonder where you'll spend it. Maybe you know right now that you're not a child of God, but you need to be. If you're here today and you say, you know what, Pastor Fisher, I want to get this settled today. I don't want to wait another day living in this doubt and this misery, if you will, but I want to receive Christ today. That's you, and you just lift up your hand so I can see it. I am not going to call you out. I am not going to embarrass you, but I do want to pray for you in a moment. Say, Pastor Fisher, I need to be saved, and I want to settle that today. I'm going to look around just for a moment. I'll give it just a moment as I look. Anyone like that, say, pray for me. I need to be saved today. Right then, Christian, you're sitting here. You've heard the word of God preached this morning. It's convicted my heart as well. Maybe you're here and you say, you know what? I'm not working out my faith. There are other things I could be doing to serve. Maybe, maybe I am lacking in my love for God. Maybe I'm lacking in my love for others, and, and I need to work on that. Maybe I'm just not focusing on eternity as I should, and that hope is there. But I just don't let it drive my life, and I want to. 
See, God spoke into my heart about one of those three areas. Would you just pray for me? I'll pray for you this morning. Slip up your hand nice and tall. I will pray for you. Yes, I see your hand. Yes, hands here to my left. Anywhere else? Yes, yes. I just want to love God more. Anyone this morning? I want to love others more. Yes, I see your hand. I want to live out my faith. I want to be reminded of the hope that is within me every day. Hands all over. Father, we love you so much today. We thank you for the truth of your word. We thank you, Lord, that we can serve you. God, today there are those that raise their hand that are desiring to do that very thing. They want to labor in their love. They want to, Lord, show their faith to the world around them. They want their hope to drive them. God, I pray that you would keep this message on their heart and mind this week. Help them, Lord, to focus on the big picture, and that's eternity. That's winning the lost until then. God, help us not to be so focused on us and our life that we lose sight of serving you. And then, God, I do still pray if there's one here today that maybe needs to know Christ, maybe they listened online and they're listening right now, I pray for them that they would settle this matter today and they'd become a child of God. Lord, we pray that you'd bless this invitation. And then bless our day that we have to follow in Jesus' name. Amen.